Hey, it's Charles here, and I've invented a new way to texture climbing holds that gives you great texture, easily, and without any moulds. I think this technique could significantly change the way that uh, larger holds are textured uh, and allow smaller hold manufacturers to get texture on the par with the bigger manufacturer without having to do large investments in mould making. The concept is incredibly simple. You put down a layer of resin and then you put a soluble granular material, in most cases salt, uh, and then you wait for the resin to cure and you wash away the salt, leaving um, a texture that's very similar to a conventionally made hold. Normal holds are cast in a mould that itself is cast from a foam block, and the foam is completely full of spherical holes, and so when you do that casting you get a hold that is also completely covered in spherical bubbles. These bubbles tend to soak up uh, chalk and and provide a grippy surface really nicely, and so I think it's worth trying to replicate that, uh, but not needing the moulds. Because we're using a more or less spherical granular material, the holds that we're creating are also covered in a closely packed uh, array of tiny spherical holes, and so the texture is incredibly similar. The major detail of this whole process is choosing your granulated material, and this really controls what the texture is like. And you can choose large texture, you could choose small texture, you could even alter texture over the hold, which opens a whole new uh, avenue that previously has not been uh, explored. If you choose a granulated material that's too big, the texture will be rough and coarse and too fine, and a lot of the grains may well get buried within the resin, or it just be too smooth. And particularly too even of a grain size, and you end up with flat spots in between the holes, which is not particularly grippy at all. And so you want to choose grain sizes of a, of a wide range. I typically look at grain sizes between 0.1 to 0.8 millimetres in a fairly even distribution, and I found that this gives a really good standard texture. I achieve this distribution by combining, in a 50-50 mix, uh, normal table salt that I've sieved to just have the biggest grains, and those are typically the sort of 0.8 uh, millimetre size grains, and salt that I have uh, wet and then dried and then broken up again, and this gets rid of the finer particles and leaves you with a little bit more of an even particle size. For your salt and your setup, it's worth doing some tests to see what really works for you and what texture you're really after. Um, it's possible that you could find salt that's generally more coarse to start with, and that might save quite a lot of time. I've tried using granulated sugar directly, and I found that although it's about right, the grain size is a little bit too small. Uh, and also the grains are too angular, and so they pack actually almost too closely. You want those spherical grains in order to uh, keep a little bit of the resin there to actually provide the strength in the texture. I think other soluble materials could also work really well, for instance something like Epsom salt or, as I say, sugar. But uh, I found table salt works for me, and it has this big advantage that if it turns out that uh, some of the salt was buried there uh, in, into the resin, uh, when it later gets exposed, it's just table salt, so there's no worry about getting it on your hands or washing it out. Although this technique works with pretty much any hold, say fiberglass or wood, here I'm using 3D printed holds, specifically printed in a tough PLA. I think 3D printing holds is a great way of trying out new shapes, especially in a small space like mine. To get them ready for coating, you have to give them a really good key up, so the resin bonds well with the plastic. So I'm just roughing them up with the coarse sandpaper, including the edges and the underside. You've got to be careful to get good coverage on the whole part. I put some washers in the screw holes to increase strength and longevity during setting. Next, it's time to mix the resin for the actual coating, and here I'm using a polyester gel coat, which is a polyester resin that is specially formulated to be used uh, as a paint, and it's very thick. I'm adding wax in styrene, which allows the gel coat to be used as a top coat. I'm also adding some grey pigment and a uh, catalyst. You can get polyester pigments in any of the RAL colours pretty cheaply, which means that you can match the colour to regular climbing holds without any issue. Next, you spread the mixed up resin onto the holds, trying to get a nice, even, thick coating of around 1 to 2 millimetres. You want to make sure to partially fill the screw holes in order to give a seamless coat and to hide the underlying plastic. The resin will level itself to some extent, but I'm helping along with a sort of bent up pipe cleaner and catching any drips but I think a foam brush would probably be a better tool here. Once the resin coat is on and even, you sprinkle the salt mixture on. I usually do two pours, one, then leave it for about a minute, and then the surface is ready to accept a second. I like to pat in the second round, hoping to get some of those grains deeper into the surface, meaning you'll end up with a much deeper texture rather than just sort of surface pitting, 
uh, and hopefully this will yield holes in the resin that will soak up chalk and hand grind nicely. It'll also help maintain the texture as it wears. Finally, we get to the best bit, dissolving away the salt, and it really is quite magical. In a couple of seconds, you go from a mess of resin to a really great hold texture. I'm using hot water with a little dish soap here, with a scrap toothbrush to help the solution process go along. I'll typically do two to three washes in hot water to ensure a good clean out. I clean up the surface a little with a coarse, sharp grinding stone tool which smooths out the high spots and reveals some of the hidden salt grains. I also tidy up the drips of resin and reveal my maker's mark with a knife. I tend to do this while the resin is still a bit soft, uh, after maybe a couple of hours, which makes the process much easier, but you could equally do this when it's fully set. I finish the holds on a flat sanding pad to level the bottom of the hold. Here they are finished and dried, looking pretty neat. You can see the texture we've achieved. I lent these holds to my local climbing wall to set their slab of the week, which is just uh, excellent. And uh, unsurprisingly, they set something incredibly hard because I only gave them four crappy crimps and I think five footholds. So they were really pretty limited. I eventually climbed it after about one and a half hours of trying and you'll see the send footage at the end of this video. Having them up in a real gym environment has really allowed me to test their longevity and see how the texture holds up and although it's only a sort of week or two weeks uh, that they'll be up there, um, the slab of the week tends to get a lot of traffic uh, because it's uh, right in the middle of the gym. What I've found so far is that one of the crimps uh, texture has rounded off on the edge a little bit and one of the footholds has chipped slightly. Although this is obviously not the best thing, I think this is a resin uh, situation and the temperature particularly in which I'm casting the resin. I'm doing this outside in the UK in winter and so it's about four degrees that the resin is being mixed at and this is way outside uh, looking up the, the recommended uh, temperatures of mixing resin and so uh, next set of holds I've bought some new resin and I'll do it at 20 to 30 degrees C and so hopefully the resin will cure much harder. So I hope this video was useful uh, and if you do give this a try please drop something in the comments down below or send me a, a message on Instagram. I'm really excited to share this with the world and hopefully uh, get hold makers uh, less reliant on using sand to texture some of their bigger macros. Uh, I find sand textures quite abrasive on the skin and I find that they tend to gunk up very quickly and so I'm hoping that we can add to the toolbox of hold making uh, using this technique. And I think particularly combining it with 3D printing allows you to make climbing holds incredibly quickly and cheaply to test out new shapes and new ideas. So if you know any hold makers that you think might be interested in this, please do send them this video and hopefully they can uh, learn something from it. If you'd like any more details about some of the things I've learned, just ask, I'm, I'm really happy to share. I'm, I'm releasing this idea sort of into the world with the hope that it sort of uh, increases uh, hold texturing knowledge globally uh, rather than trying to keep it as a secret. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around.